We're going to take a look at a beautiful song. This is, of course, Long, Long Time, as a recorded and a huge hit for Linda Ronstadt back in 1970. Um, we're not going to work on the instrumental arrangement. I may save that for another lesson, because I do like to play through this kind of instrumentally and mess with, you know, just make it my own thing, since I can't sing like Linda, or like a lot of people, like most people. Anyway, but um, the song has a fascinating history. It's, um, it was written by Gary White, and Linda had made her first solo album called uh, Hand Sewn Homegrown for Capitol in 1969 that didn't really do very well, and so she was kind of like looking for, looking for a song that, that could become what eventually became her signature song. And first one, she had a few others, You're No Good, anyway. But, um, and so some of the a little uh, cadre of, of songwriters, including Jerry Jeff Walker, David Bromberg, and Gary White, were all kind of buddies who, who were hanging out in, in folk clubs in New York and stuff. And, and uh, I think it was David Bromberg who said, said, hey, Linda, you should go listen to this song of Gary's. And so she did. And she fell in love with it, and she kind of insisted on putting it on her next album, which was which came out in 1970, called Silk Purse, and it became a huge hit. Jerry Jeff Walker was writing um, Mr. Bojangles right around the same time. So uh, what we're going to do in this lesson, and Linda, of course, went on to, to make so many cool albums and, and great songs, and we'll take a look at more of them. I've got a couple of them up here already, but uh, I'm... I'm I was surprised to find out that I hadn't gotten to this one yet, just the other, just recently. So, uh, what we're going to do in this lesson, the the guitar accompaniment is fairly straightforward. Um, the chord progression is very simple; it's all chords in the key of G. Uh, technically, more E minor because it uses a few secondary dominant chords. We use B7 and A7 to get us to other chords in the key. Um, and uh, the the picking is going to be fairly straight arpeggio, but we're going to talk about some variations in there. That's kind of what the guitar was doing, except it used D7 chords. I, I played I played D right there, but it's usually you're going to hear something like this. So that's what we're going to look at in the lesson: is just doing and and kind of making it your own, not necessarily worrying about doing everything. I usually have beginning students, not beginning, but students when they work on this song for the first time, stay with a more regular pattern like this. Passing bass notes, sometimes going up. And we can get away without the barred B7 chord, which I just played right there. So that's coming up in there too. Um, but we will talk about, about variations and, and how to how to make it make it kind of interesting. Now, one last thing is I'm gonna play this in the key of G. On capoed, Linda sings it a whole step higher, but the guitar is usually uh, the, the guitar player playing this would typically do this capoed at the second fret, putting her in the key of A. So, um, but I always tell people the story with capos is you you want to put the song in the key that you can sing it best. So just because A is the key that Linda does it in doesn't mean that you need to do this in A. Matter of fact, many of my female students that play this song. Even some of my male ones, well, they have to do it in a, an octave lower anyway, but um, would would do it just a little bit lower and play it uncapoed. So use a capo to match your voice, not the original recording necessarily. Um, so topic for another another discussion for a different day too. But okay, um, let's get into the nuts and bolts of long, long time. 